I guess um, I'm just interested in a brief update on what you're seeing locally um, when it comes to this new variant. It's too early to tell because, uh, well, you know, the, the quick answer is uh, we don't know. It, it's likely in the United States. Uh, I think at last count, it was reported in 13 different countries, um, including Canada. So it was first detected in South Africa, uh, as you guys are aware. Um, that doesn't necessarily means doesn't necessarily mean that that's where it originated. That's where it was detected first, and it was it's been associated with travel, uh, you know, uh, as a, as that like from a nexus there. So. Um, what the, the situation is, without going into too many technical weeds, to detect this variant requires uh, advanced whole genome sequencing. And hospital labs, most hospital labs in the United States can't do that technology, so it has to be, specimens have to be collected first, then they have to be prepared, and then they have to be sent to a special sequencing laboratory, so that takes time. But as we speak, um, you know, Rochester Regional is uh, is looking for this variant. We have people, our laboratories collecting samples and, and preparing them in the way I just described. Andrea, follow up? Um, no, I'm good. If you want to pass it on to someone else, thank you. Okay, um, Raquel? Yes. Hi. Good morning. Um, I know there's a lot that we don't know, but Correct. what do we know? Uh, what do we know for yeah. certain um, about sure. this new variant? Sure. Uh, yeah, you're exactly right. There's a lot that we don't know. And some of what myself and what anybody says today can be, uh, you know, changed tomorrow. We're, we're learning more and more every day. This is what we know uh, right now. Uh, the reason why it's been labeled a variant of concern which is currently the, the highest classification of variants that we have. So the public health laboratories, the World Health Organization and the CDC, they, they list variants in three different ways. They list them as variants of interest. They list them as variants of concern. That's what this is. And that's what Delta was. Uh, and then there's variants of high consequence. And fortunately, there are no variants circulating yet that are variants of high consequence. So variants of concern is the highest category. So what we know about this Omicron is that uh, why it's labeled a variant of concern is because of the number of changes that, has, that it has undergone and in the rate that it had accumulated these changes, the speed at which these changes occurred. So that's what kind of surprised scientists and uh, laboratorians. So unlike other, uh, you know, there's, there's many different strains of this virus circulating, and most of the strains are, are pretty much the same, or they're no different than the main circulating strain, which currently is Delta. But now in South Africa, this strain was detected, and it appears to be spreading rapidly. So it appears to have, uh, be more transmissible. And there are at least, you know, at last count, there were nearly 50 changes in this virus compared to the preceding strains. So it's those number of changes or those mutations that, that are of concern. Additionally, it's where there's those mutations occur. So this whole genome sequencing that I mentioned looks at the entire genetic makeup of an organism. And so that enables us to look at, you know, which parts of it have these changes. And, you know, about of those 50 changes, maybe 30 or so, are in the area that the vaccine uses to instruct our bodies to make the protective antibodies. So that's, that's why it's concerning. So there's a lot of these mutations that, that are in the region of the virus that causes an infection and that can, that is, that is related to how the vaccines work. So that's why everybody's, that's why it's got everybody's attention. So there is a possibility that this, this variant could evade these vaccines and cause some type of uh, inf infiltrate the protection that we already have with the vaccines yeah. and cause severe illness. There is a possibility, but we don't know that yet. These studies are currently ongoing. What that has to be done is, you know, um, researchers have to take the blood from people who have been vaccinated and put it in the laboratory and see if it neutralizes 
if it neutralizes a, a, a virus that they use, they, they can't use the actual virus. So they use a, they use a, a mimic, they use what's called a pseudovirus. So those studies are ongoing. And, um, you know, the, the medical directors of, of, uh, of Moderna and, and um, Pfizer say that maybe in about three or four more weeks and we should know some of that details. But yes, that's the concern. That said, it's still very important. All the message from all the experts in the public health sector still the best way we can protect ourselves is to get vaccinated if you're not already vaccinated. On top of that, they're encouraging people to get the boosters. If, if their primary series has been completed more than six months ago, they're strongly encouraged to get the boosters. Rachel? Um, yeah, so I was wondering, um, we've been hearing a lot about in the past, if people got vaccinated, um, the more people that became vaccinated, the less we would see these variants emerging. So why do you think this one, this new one has kind of popped up? Yeah, that's a great point. Because, you know, my opinion would be that even though it seems like a lot of people are vaccinated, there's still a lot of unvaccinated people, both in the United States and globally. So not, not all, many countries have not been as fortunate as developed countries or, you know, countries such as Israel, United States, you know, the, you know, in the United Kingdom and countries in Africa have vaccination rates as low as 20%. You know, that said, there's potentially only 70% of the people in the United States that are vaccinated. So what they're learning is that you know, what they talk about herd immunity, when you get to about 70% of the population being immune to help the, the, the epidemic or the pandemic stop spreading or stop, maybe with, you know, we're, with, we're seeing with these higher transmissible variants like Delta and this one, it's maybe more upwards of 80 or 85%. So yeah, it's still the way we can prevent these new mutations and these new variants from emerging is to get as many people in the population uh, as 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 immune as possible. Yeah. Follow up, Rachel. I'm all set. Thank you. Is anyone on from Channel Ten? Channel Eight. You're welcome. Well, you know, what we can expect is unfortunately increased uh, fatalities because the fatalities, there's a delay. So as you had mentioned, we, we are already seeing increased, uh, uh, increased number of patients in the hospital and also in the ICU and on ventilators now. So we've, we've been seeing that unfortunate uptick for a few weeks now. So generally two weeks after that you have more uh, serious of infections, then you start to see the fatalities. So I think in the next couple of weeks, we'll see some fatalities. The, uh, it's important to point out that still as of last week, you know, in our ICUs, the people who were in the ICU, the people who are on the ventilator, eight uh, to nine out of 10 of those with those severest of infections were, were unvaccinated. Now we're, we're, we're seeing some breakthrough infections there uh, for the most part, for the large majority, for the vast majority, the breakthrough infections are not as severe as uh, the infections in the unvaccinated. So, you know, as you were, 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 what we can also expect is more cases as people go indoors and they gather. Uh, and then as people go to holiday gatherings, I think a couple last week and a couple of weeks ago, if you, if you talk to, uh, Dr. Mendoza and, and, the, and the county health departments, they'll say still where they see a lot of uh, transmission occurring is at small, you know, private events. So, uh, you know, as people get together and celebrate the holidays and as we go more and more indoors and spend less time outdoors, that contributes to increased uh, spread as well.
Yeah, that that's pretty. You know, I'd have to I'd have to speculate. Like you said, it's a little too early to tell. Um, but what I can say is that you know these variants, these different mutations, they happen on a regular basis. So, so that's not worthy. So sometimes these variants come and and they look concerning at first, and then they kind of fizzle. And that could happen with Omicron. As we get more data, we could see that. Well, it's pretty much you know, despite all of these 50 mutations that I talked about, including those in the, in the, in the important regions, it could be that it's, it's similar to Delta or it's no worse than Delta. However, it could be worse than Delta and it could, you know, reduce some of our progress that I think all the experts though still say they get vaccinated, even if the, if the level of protection is reduced in our current vaccine constructs, it's still very, it still be a, it still help a lot of the people. And, and you know, the, the most protection people have is if they get a natural infection and then they get the recommended shot after that, they're probably the most protected. Uh, so, so we have to see, but it, it can, you know, it, it could be a, a, a substantial speed bump in our way to, you know, get this pandemic over with. Does anybody else have a question that I missed? Yeah, um, can I jump in? It's Jane Flash from Channel sure. 13. Um, I had a question um, about vaccines and boosters. Um, if the conventional wisdom is that we should still get the booster, why shouldn't we wait for the booster, a new one to come out uh, that might target this specifically? And why should we instead get the booster now? Well, it, it, um, you know, that, that's a great question. It's, you should get the booster now because it's still the, the best chance that you have of getting protected. It's still, it's the best we've got today. That's why you should get it. Especially if you, if your primary series was completed more than six months ago, because the protection afforded by that series starts to wane and, and it's wearing off. Now, if you had a recent COVID infection and then you, you recently completed your primary series, you, you have a little more time because uh, you, know, you have the highest level of protection and, and you're, you're not out to that six month time. So you might have some time to wait. Now, the other reason to get it, you know, consider getting a booster now rather than waiting is because the, the studies, if the studies show that the current vaccines are effective, quite effective, uh, maybe only minimally less effective against this variant, then the companies might not develop, uh, a, you know, a, a mutation directed vaccine. They just might not develop and it might be a while uh, before you have a more specific or directed uh, type of vaccine. Uh, does, that, does that kind of answer your question? Sort of? Yeah, it does. And if I could just follow up, is that why maybe we didn't see a, a Delta specific vaccine or is it because the- Correct. The, okay. Right. Right. The, the, what, you know, there's, there's a bunch of different um, criteria that go into what's a concerning variant or an interest variant or a high consequence. Um, and Delta didn't rise to the level of, of escaping the vaccine enough, if you will. We were lucky. Uh, so, yeah, that, that's what happened. Um, but we don't know that about this one. But that said, Delta didn't have all these changes that we're talking about. So that's, you know, that's why, that's why we're hearing all about this. You know, that's why this has gotten everybody's attention, at least for now. Well, and I will tell you, if I could just follow up with one more question, um, that that's been the discussion in, in sort of my social circles about, mm -hmm. you know, should we wait now that we know this new one's out there and now that we're hearing they may develop something, but we also know the holidays are coming up and, yep. and, and all of that. So how do we sort of weigh that all out? Uh, my opinion would be don't wait. The simple way to do it, like if it were me, like I went and, and, and got my booster as soon as I could. Uh, and I encourage my friends and, and family uh, and everybody and colleagues, you know, and my colleagues encouraged that the same. So if you were, if you were at, if you were, if I was your physician, if you were coming to me as, as your primary care physician or as, as your infectious disease consultant, and you asked me that same question, should I wait or should I get the booster? I'd say, get the booster. You don't know how long you're going to wait. And we're in a high risk season, as we said, because everybody's inside and people are going to more gatherings. So, yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Did someone from Channel 10 have a question? I saw it pop up. Anybody else? 
One other thing, uh, this is Ted Baker with FingerLakes1.com. Sure. Uh, any idea how long it will take to determine whether this variant needs vaccine changes or not? Yeah, the the I, yeah, actually we do. It's about three to four weeks, and that those that statement came from well, the, the the medical director of Moderna. So I'd say about a month, hopefully a little less. Thank you. That's uh, if everything goes well. You know, that's if everything goes well because, like like there like a lot of stuff that we buy today, there are shortages. And I know one of the things that our our referral lab and and our we were challenged by. In, in sequencing these variants is laboratory supplies. And we commonly see shortages of reagents and chemicals. So when I say four months, four, you know, four weeks or three to four weeks, that's that's assuming there's no surprises or there's no problems. Dr. Leshow, it's Jane Flash again. Are you currently seeing a shortage in reagents and chemicals that you need? And can you describe that situation? We did. We had a bat, you know, I'm speaking specifically now for these sequencing because you need special equipment and you need special reagents for the sequencing. So we, we had in, from September to October, there was a lot of those supplies that are, are, were on back order. And so we actually have a, you know, a little backlog of samples that we still have to sequence. You know. And now, given the positivity rate, we're getting you know, many new samples every day and it's hard to keep up with all of those. Now that's just for that. Now, now for the detection, for the nasal swabs that we get, I, I'm not aware of any shortages uh, of those type of tests uh, so far. So that's good news. So like the rapid antigen tests that you would get and the, the, the PCRs, so far I haven't heard of a shortage, but you know, we've, we've had shortages of other laboratory supplies and you know, sometimes they're short lived and sometimes they're a little longer. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have one question. Um, so, it was asked if they, what are the symptoms of this of this variant? Not that you'd know, but they would be similar to regular COVID, correct? They'd be very similar, right? So uh, same old thing. Just to review, um, it, you you might not if you're fully vaccinated or you're you got an infection and then you got vaccinated, you might have very minimal symptoms. You might test positive for various reasons. So, but you could have you know starts out typically. Typically, it starts out as, you know, loss of taste, loss of smell, uh, like a fever, uh, nausea. It, it can GI, COVID can present many different ways. So it can present as like a, like a gastrointestinal illness. It can present like a respiratory illness. So the typical symptoms of the, of the prior strains was what we expect this to present as as well. Anyone else that I missed? Going once, going twice. Okay, I think we're all set. Thank you, Thanks Dr. Lusho. Thank, Thank you, everybody. Thanks, Veronica. Thank you. Yep. yep. Bye. Bye.